Well, good evening. This is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on Sunday, the 10th of September. And this is a little update of the uh, Crown Land patent. Okay, and it's kind of interesting. Here we have a little article here. A proposed study guide will only mislead new Canadians. Okay, so <laughs> out of the mouths of babes. Why this chap, Tom Flanagan, who is the Professor Emeritus of Political Science at the University of Calgary and former campaign manager for conservative political parties, picked on this particular item, I will never know. Because before I read this, and we should read this because it's very important, I was, you know, I, I, I marked out some, I was going to see that, look, I, I highlighted some and I thought, no, no, I'm going to read the entire thing because it's so interesting because it confirms exactly what those of us uh, have believed for, uh, for a long time is that you know property is deeded from the crown to the individual in its entirety so here is a sideways confirmation uh, I've done actually since I last spoke on crown land patents I've done quite a bit of research and I found nothing to contradict my belief that these crown land patents give you complete jurisdiction over your own property. Uh, this is important whether you live in a village, a city, a town, or in a rural area. Let me just start from the beginning. What seems to be uh, that you cannot do with a crown land patent is you cannot get out of paying your property taxes and you cannot get out of paying your mortgage. Uh, the mortgage and the property taxes actually are, are, are obvious really because you enter into a contract with the municipality and with the mortgage company. Okay, it doesn't matter where they got the money from, it doesn't matter what your house you live in, you have formed some kind of contract, some kind of binding contract between you and the mortgage company and with you and the municipality because a municipality is just a corporation okay it's a not-for-profit corporation okay so we're dealing with just like we're dealing with Walmart or Canadian Tire or um, you know uh, Quaker Oats or PepsiCo uh, Coca-Cola doesn't matter what it is it's just another corporation so basically those are the only two things that you cannot do with your crown land patent it is all about jurisdiction it is all about owning the three dimensional space which is your property goes from the center of the earth to the heavens okay as well as the length and breadth of the property and when you have that property uh, that crown land patent in your hand that is deeded to you by the crown free of all encumbrances okay free of all encumbrances so you can do what you want to do on your property and the municipality does not have a say in it at all now your neighbors might you know if you want to turn your your uh, property into a garbage dump or a um, you know some kind of scrap metal place the municipal sorry the your neighbors might have something to say about that but uh, as far as the municipality is concerned they have no jurisdiction of your property anymore because once you've applied for a certified copy and paid for that copy and that payment has been accepted that has been assigned to you as legal owner of the property on which you reside okay uh, so this gives you basically you know you, you you can stop bylaw officers at your property line and say you don't have any jurisdiction here you cannot come on my property I do not give you permission and if you disagree with that then you can take me to court and you can prove that your jurisdiction overrides my jurisdiction now, one thing I am looking into uh, is this, um, there's something nagging in the back of my head that tells me 
that I should be sending a notice to the city of Quarter Lakes telling them that my property is now under my jurisdiction and I refuse to be uh, burdened by their bylaws. Now, thankfully for them, mo most bylaws in the village make pretty much common sense in, in, a, in a lot of cases. Uh, but, you know, I do fully intend to put my well back online on this property, which I'm digging out in the backyard right now. And I do fully intend to have um, a small number of chickens for survival on my property. So let me just read you this uh, from a Professor Emeritus, okay, uh, and uh, for political science. The federal government is currently working on a revision to, of Discover Canada, the study guide for the test that immigrants must pass before obtaining citizenship. To judge from a recent Canadian press story, the new manual will read like a liberal campaign platform. Perhaps that's not surprising because the Liberals control the government. Maybe it's even fair because the Conservatives revised the manual in 2011 when they controlled the government. But it would be nice if those who are politicising the Canadian Citizenship Manual would at least represent Canadian law accurately. According to the Canadian press, the draft revision says, Today Canadians, for example, can own their own homes and buy land thanks to treaties that the government negotiated. But a moment's reflection shows that this statement cannot be correct. Land cession treaties have never been negotiated at, uh, in the Atlantic provinces, most of Quebec and most of British Columbia. Yet Canadians can own homes and buy land in those provinces, just as they can in Ontario and the Prairie provinces where land sessions treaties were signed with First Nations. The ability of Canadians to own land and homes depends upon grants of land from the sovereign. In the English legal tradition, sovereignty includes title to land, which the sovereign can subsequently grant to individuals or corporations. Modern Canadian sovereignty rests upon earlier French and British sovereignty founded upon discovery, occasional conquest, establishment of governments able to enforce territories' boundaries and administer law and recognition by other sovereign states. So there you go. Land ownership can only happen through grants and the deeding of land from the Crown to the individual. Uh, even while recognising Indigenous land rights, including full ownership in certain circumstances, the Supreme Court of Canada has consistently upheld Canadian sovereignty as the basis of the Constitution. Think of Canadian sovereignty as the basis of the Constitution. Chief Justice Antonio Lema N. Van de Piet phrased this as the reconciliation of the pre-existence of Aboriginal societies with the sovereignty from the Crown. From the beginning, French, British and Canadian sovereigns have been made grants of land upon which our system of private land ownership has developed. How interesting that so this should be in a study guide for new immigrants into Canada. Okay. Uh, those, uh, those grants did not depend upon prior, uh, prior negotiations of treaties with First Nations, otherwise there would be no private property today in Canada. Ironically, private property in land does not exist on most Indigenous reserves today. That deficiency in the Indian Act is, the, is only one of the many ways in which the property rights of the First Nations have been abused. But mistakes in that area do not mean the private property rights of, uh, of other Canadians depend upon treaties. Another misleading statement in the revision is this advice to new Canadians about their legal obligations. Obeying the law, serving on a jury, paying taxes, filling out census and respecting treaties with Indigenous peoples are mandatory. But treaties where legal agreements between Crown, advised by Cabinet and First Nations, represented by their chiefs, 
they imposed obligations on the Crown set to set aside land and provide assistance of various types, but they don't impose any specific obligations upon citizens other than the general obligation to obey the law, which uh, incidentally is also imposed upon First Nations by the text of the treaties. Uh, these wording changes, if the government follows through with them, won't have any immediate legal effect, but we should be clear about what's happening. In the past election campaign, the Liberals made many irredeemable promises to Indigenous voters, such as adopting the United Nations Declaration of Ind Indigenous Rights. Now, instead of impossible legal changes, they are offering words, and words matter in the long run. As the great philosopher Thomas Hobbes wrote, Words are wise men's counters. They do but reckon with them, but they are the money of fools. These foolish words will tend to make new Canadians, and indeed all Canadians feel like interlopers in their own country. And, you know, this brings me back to uh, the Constitution, you know, which is founded on the Magna Carta. And what happened with the Magna Carta in 1211 uh, is that we forced the Crown to honour these rights, these foundational rights held within the Constitution. So the government is there to uphold the Constitution. And that means honouring the sovereignty of land ownership. So with my Crown Land Patent, I have complete sovereignty over this property upon which I reside and own. So, uh, in closing, that about wraps it up. Uh, I have found nothing to the contrary to suggest anything else is true and that uh, the only thing you cannot do with your Crown Land patent is a mortgage and avoid your property taxes. And those property taxes, that is a contract you entered into with the municipality to provide certain services in the area in which you live. Nothing more and nothing less. You voted in a council to follow your wishes and for that council to manage the staff to fill, fulfill those wishes. So uh, don't forget the order of things. You know, I find it interesting when I go to the municipal office uh, in town here, or in the village, sorry, uh, and I see a little sign by the parking spots that says, Client parking. Well, it's not client parking. It's owner parking. I'm the owner. You are the owner. If you pay property taxes, you are the owner. And this is a very subtle way in which they use words uh, to change history. And, you know, this article... Is, is another example of using words to change history, to change the meaning of those words very subtly. And it's up to us to make sure that those words are not misunderstood, misconstrued or misused. But in the long run, this is very good news. This is complete confirmation from a completely often left or right field, I guess the right field because they're conservatives, um, kind of way. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? And that is why I read the paper for these little gems that you run across once in a blue moon. Anyway, that's it. That's a little update on Crown Land Patents. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and subscribe below and don't forget to click that little bell next to my subscription and um, that way you won't miss any of my updates or new videos. Okay, so this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, and I hope you have a great evening and a great week coming up. And uh, there is lots to talk about, so it won't be long before I am making another video. So this is Hound Dog Steve signing off.